Hello! Hello, bonjour, connect here in community! Hope everybody's doing well, had a good last month. Um, today I will be talking about earwax, okay? So I know it's a very, uh, a topic that we get a lot of questions uh, in the office. So um, hopefully you're having a really, oh, hi Dee. <laughs> hope you're having a, a really good first day of fall. And um, I think I had mentioned before that uh, I really enjoy the, the changes of seasons. Uh, that was one of the, the good change from um, moving from South America to North America, uh, to see the change of the trees and to drinking pumpkin lattes and, and all of that. Hi, Susan. Hi, Ruth. Um, so. I will be talking about ear wax, um, how we can manage the ear wax. Um, when do you know that you need to have that wax removed? And uh, what are the risks to throw away your wax? Okay, when we had the wax removed, I mean. So if this is your first time uh, in this uh, live videos, welcome. Uh, we have been doing these videos for a while and uh, I had quite a bit of questions I saw on Facebook uh, about um, if you can rewatch the video or share with friends, um, you can definitely go to our Facebook page and look for videos. So all the videos I have done so far, they are there. Um, you can also find them on uh, YouTube as well in case um, you have a friend that is, on, is not on Facebook, okay? But if it's your first time here, uh, my name is Cristiani Basilio. I am an audiologist and I have a doctor degree in audiology and uh, I have been working in the field for 18 years um, and most of my career uh, for Connect Hearing, okay? If you have any questions, I see there's a lot of people watching. <laughs> nice. Hi, Betty. Hi, Kingdom. Hi, Ryan. Uh, so if you have any questions during the video, post the questions below the video. And then my colleague will share with me if I can see uh, you guys hear the, the question and I can answer the question at the end of the video. Okay. So here we go. Um, so I have talked a little bit about uh, the implications of uh, having ear wax when you have hearing aids in one of my videos. I want to start this video talking about that because uh, I think it will help you to identify if you should have your ears checked or not, okay? Another thing is some symptoms that you, uh, I would like to point out as well that uh, you might, it might be related to wax, to your wax. So it might be triggering it. So besides um, affecting the hearing aid performance, um, you could have some symptoms like um, dizziness, uh, like tinnitus, uh, like a change in your hearing, um, like um, pain in the ear canal, um, itchy ears, um, what else, some clicky noise. So all those symptoms could potentially be related to earwax, okay? So if you have had any of those symptoms and it's not going away, um, you might be one of just your doctor or your hearing professional to take a look in your ears and see if it's uh, related to, to wax, okay? But talking about the hearing aid uh, for the, um, to, to think if you have wax or not, what what are the symptoms that you might be noticing with your hearing aids? Uh, the first one definitely is the how they are performing, right? So uh, if you notice your hearing aid is not performing as well, um, it's maybe intermittent, there's sound, no sound, um, and you have done your homework, you have cleaned it, you have changed your wax filter, um, you have changed your batteries, and you still have that problem, then you might be uh, want to go to the clinic and have your ears checked for wax, okay? Another symptom from um, a blockage of wax in the ear canal is related to feedback issues with hearing aids. So especially with the newer, um, not, I wouldn't say not even newer, like a couple of years now, we have really good uh, feedback management system in the hearing aids. So if you have a problem of uh, getting close to things and they squeal, or you hug someone and you get a squealing sound, or your partner noticing there is an echo sound coming out of your hearing aids and uh, you know for sure that your hearing aid has been inserted properly uh, that could be likely uh, wax in your ears okay 
So if you have one of those symptoms and you haven't noticed that, I would definitely encourage you to have your ears checked. All right. So why do we have earwax? Okay. So we have earwax. So in the ear canal, in the beginning of the ear canal, uh, we have some uh, gl glands. Um, so another name for earwax, a medical term is cerumen. So there is this ceruminous gland that produces the substance in the beginning of the ear canal. And this substance mix it up with a dry skin, uh, with hair in the ear canal, uh, with dirt, and then it produces the wax, okay? So wax, it's there to protect your uh, ear canal, okay? So it's just to avoid getting dirt through it, avoid getting bacteria inside. If you have some wax in the ear canal and it's not causing any of the symptoms that I mentioned to you, and it's not affecting the performance of the hearing aid we're just gonna leave the wax alone okay so i know a lot of you feel oh when i get out of the shower my ears is wet i want to dry it out with q-tip that's not a good idea okay but i will talk more about that but if we look at it in your ear and we have enough wax there's a build-up wax that could be causing some of those symptoms um, and affecting your hearing aid performance um, or you're having to change your wax filter all the time for example um, that's not convenient right so then we should have the wax removed okay so the wax naturally falls out of the ear canal but if you wear um, hearing aids if you uh, have maybe a more narrow ear canal a more bendy ear canal uh, that ear wax is not gonna fall out from uh, from your ear canal naturally okay so you you have more a uh, chance of having a buildup of wax okay so um, let me see okay so let's talk about the hearing aid performance i already mentioned that so what is the best way is there a best way to have the the wax removed i want to start talking first what are the worst ways to have the wax removed so first of all i know a lot of you know that um q-tips right so let's think about q-tip so q-tips first they are not found in the pharmacy where you have products for ears they are on the makeup session okay so that already tells you everything q-tips are not meant to clean ears okay i don't know how this is started in the past but uh, it's definitely not a good option bobby pins not a good option uh, ear candling definitely doesn't work okay uh, car keys definitely not a good option and i'm laughing because it's true i don't know you i'm sure you probably have a friend uh or you maybe even know that that uh, you try to clean the, the wax with some of those tools okay why that's not good our ear canal length is about one inch so 2.5 centimeters okay so it's definitely not very long and as i mentioned in the beginning the ear wax is produced in the very beginning of the ear canal. So even when you tell me that you are using Q-tips just in the beginning to dry it out, you could already be potentially pushing this wax further in your canal. And you might get some wax out when you look at it, the Q-tip, but you don't know how much wax is still left inside, okay? And how much have you pushed it? So I know some of you probably have been thinking, I have been cleaning my ears with q-tips for a long time and I never had a problem okay my answer to that would be you were the lucky ones okay so probably you just don't even have a lot of earwax and then you're just drying your skin and uh, luckily no accident has happened I can share with you uh, quite a few times we see people in the office that were cleaning with q-tips or anything more pointy um, maybe in the bathroom someone else from the family opened the door they like get startled them and goes and punch their eardrum okay it's very painful okay so this can easily happen so even though it has never happened I would ask you please to not do that okay because it could potentially happen okay so um, if the wax is there 
and then you were not able to remove or you're still having the symptoms, um, what we need to do first? We need to have your ear canal inspected. So once we do uh, what we call as an otoscopy, so we're gonna be using a tool like this, okay? So these are disposable tips and it magnifies, so it gives us the perception, the depth perception in the ear canal and how much wax you have there. There is also what we call a video otoscopy. So we're gonna also look at it in your ears with that, okay? If we look at it and the wax, as I said, is just there, it's not creating any problems, we're just gonna leave it alone. But if the wax is impacting your ear canal, there is different methods that we need to use to remove the wax. Is there a best method? Not really. It depends on the consistency of the wax. It depends on the location of the wax inside of the ear canal. It depends on your health condition and it depends on the condition of your eardrum, okay? So let's talk about consistency, okay? I know, I'm glad I have like a lot of people watching me today and I can talk about wax because uh, I get very excited when I remove wax from people's ears and they can hear again, so they're all happy. And uh, I wanna share that with my, my husband. And he's like, oh, your wax, like it's awful. It's so disgusting. <laughs> so, but, you get used to it, so I'm glad a lot of people here are watching and want to, to, to see that. So I have a picture of um, uh, the consistency of wax. So how it works is when we, when we have like a fresh wax, just in the beginning of the ear canal where the wax is produced, um, it means it's a, it's a wax that hasn't been there for too long. So it's quite easy for us to remove. And we might probably be using what uh, with some curettes, so there's something like that, okay? They can be metal um, material or disposable material. Um, there is something else now, new stuff out there that it calls like a earway. So it's like a little coil, so it kind of removes the wax, okay? So because the wax is being very, in the beginning of the ear canal, it would be very easy for us to remove that without hurting you without scratching the ear canal um, and uh, and then it'll be very easy to remove with no pain okay and i want to show you a picture of it so let me just gonna show you how the, the wax is uh produced hold on okay you see that okay so this the wax is produced like in the beginning as i said and it's like a ring that forms in the beginning of the canal. And it's very gooey, as you can see, is a, a light uh, brown color. So very easy to remove. And if it was just that amount of wax that I would look at it, I would not remove it at all. But if that wax is kind of building up a bit more and closing the ear uh, canal, then we should remove if you are hearing aids, okay? But if we look inside the ear canal and we see a more dark uh, brown color of ear wax, it means that we ear wax has been there for a long time, okay? And then it gets way harder to remove. So I'm gonna show you a picture and you can see that. Okay? Look how dark is the wax. And this is the clear eardrum after the wax is removed. Okay, so when that wax is, is that dark and it's so deep in the ear canal, uh, we can try to remove it without softener, the, using some softener um, to, to get it easy out, right? So um, important thing to uh, think about it is um, the method we're gonna be using for that because as I mentioned, Consistency is one of the important things when we define the method. Uh, the location is another important thing. So the first picture I show you was right in the beginning of the ear canal. The first portion of the ear canal is cartilage. It's a soft cartilage. So it's not very painful at all when we touch that area. Let me show you. I just wanna show you here. Maybe I should show you so make it easier to understand. So that, that is the beginning, okay? So it's soft cartilage. But if the wax is deeper, closer to the eardrum, this is a bone portion, okay? So that bone portion inside of the ear canal 
it will be very sensitive, okay, very sensitive. So sometimes you try to clean your ears and you feel, oh, ooh, I feel a little pain. That probably, you, you, I'm sure you are not even close to the eardrum, but if you have some wax, you pushed in the wax and it's close to that bone portion of the ear, ear canal. And it gets much harder to remove, it's more painful. I know there was one of questions like that um, before I started the video, if it's painful. But it all depends the location, okay? So if you haven't been playing yourself um, and we just in the beginning of the canal, it's easy. Uh, but the wax is pushed in further and is drier, that can be more painful. So we need to get something to loosen up the wax. So there is um, oil or there are some uh, products you can buy on the drugstore over the counter that has some peroxide uh, that will loosen that wax so professionally we can remove it if they're very deep in the canal, okay? Important to think about what I mentioned about the health condition. This is another uh, way, well, another important thing because if you are on blood thinners, uh, our ear canal, there's a lot of blood vessels in the ear canal, so we can bleed very easily, okay? So if you are on blood thinners, we need to be very careful using the curettes um, or any tool that can scratch the ear canal, because uh, when we scratch the ear canal, even like if you're trying to clean yourself, we open the skin in the ear canal. So that environment, because the ear canal is like warm and more uh, wet, like moisture in there, uh, it's perfect to, uh, to have bacteria, right? And you can create an ear infection, okay? So that is a risk as well, like when you're trying to clean the ears um, yourself or even in the clinic. But in the clinic, of course, we are gonna use some solutions to help that skin to heal faster and then we'll, um, so, so this, uh, your infection shouldn't happen, okay? And uh, another thing important is the uh, condition of your eardrum. So other two methods that I haven't mentioned is about um, a suction. So we have like a suction equipment that we can just, you know, get the suction to get the wax out or even flushing the ear, so irrigation system, okay? So if you have, for example, uh, issues with dizziness, um, irrigation probably won't be recommended, okay? Because you can, um, especially, you can uh, trigs, you, it can trig the uh, dizziness. Um, if you don't have any uh, problem with dizziness, even then, if you do any washing the ears, and I'll talk more about what you can do for it, um, we should always be using warm water, never cold water, okay? Because that could trigger uh, dizziness as well, okay? And then the eardrum condition as well. What is the, if your eardrum is healthy, you never had a perforated eardrum, you have no um, you know, perforation in there, um, then we are okay maybe to use the flushing, the irrigation system. Uh, once that wax is soft and uh, if it's too deep that we cannot remove with the, the curettes, but if you had any problems with an um, eardrum, maybe you're not aware of it, um, then if we flush the ears, that water will go through the eardrum, right? So it will be very painful, causing infections, so it will create a big mess, okay? So I think it's important for me to bring it up with all those risks because um, I know sometimes people, oh, I'm just cleaning a little bit, or it's bothering me, it's itchy, uh, but there are a lot of things that can happen, okay? And, uh, and as I mentioned, maybe you have been doing this for so long, but uh, you're just lucky, okay? Uh, that doesn't mean it will not happen in the future, okay? So, um, all right, so once we had the ear inspected and we found the best way to remove that uh, occluding wax from your ear canal, now your ear canal is gonna look clean and perfect. What do we do next, right? Because the problem of that is some people will have a lot of wax very soon. So sometimes every two, three months, they have wax again. Others will might have wax again build up, maybe in a year or so, okay? Because thinking about when you have hearing aids, um, of course you are blocking your ear canal, so that uh, natural uh, way that the wax falls out of your ears won't happen, okay? 
and as again as I said the shape of the the ear canal as well so what can you do to to maintain your ear cleaned okay so after you went through the process of having the ear inspected uh, okay now we know how to have your ears re your uh, ear wax removed everything was cleaned by your uh, physician, by our ear, nose, and throat, by our hearing professional and audiologist. Um, if once is removed, then we're gonna let you know what is the best way to keep them clean, okay? If we identify that your eardrum is clean and your eardrum has no perforation, okay? You don't have recurrent ear infections. So everything is healthy in your ear canal. Um, you could, um, once a month, I would add a little bit of a maybe olive oil or baby oil um, or uh, this um, products in the drug that ha in the drug um, in the pharmacies. I mean that has a peroxide that dissolves the wax. So you kind of uh, drop a little bit. Okay, so it's important to not use the Q-tip to add that in your ears because I see people doing that and it's not gonna help. So you need to get like an eyedropper. Just drop a little. Tilt your head a little bit, wait a minute or so, do the same thing in the other side, slip through it, so do that overnight, and then the next day in the morning, you can wash your ears, okay? Um, you can just let the water go if you're having your shower, or you can have this little bulb, I don't have it here with me, but I'm sure if you go to the drugstore, you'll find it. There is some, uh, you can just flush your ear canal, okay? with warm water always okay and again we don't want to do that all the time once a month is more than enough if your ear was cleaned okay because that way doesn't mean you're not going to create more wax but it's just going to dissolve that wax it's going to keep it on the side of the wall okay so like like that picture i showed you uh let me show you that again okay so the wax is just going to stay around here okay it's not going to impact the hearing aid performance or anything else and then uh, once every couple of months maybe six months a year uh, when you come for a hearing test we can take a look and see if there is too much build up again and if there is we need to get that removed okay so if you do that on a regular basis i had a lot of uh, patients that um uh you know it worked for them a lot like it's just they haven't had any problem anymore with a wax buildup. okay um i would say it's better to do that flushing thing if everything is healthy as i mentioned uh your canal and you you got the okay from your doctor to do that yourself um because then you there is no way you can push it in the wigs further okay uh, that water that you use with the bulb um, it doesn't have a lot of pressure okay so if you um, if you have a big build up you won't be able to clean yourself just doing that okay you need to have that removed professionally but if it's just a bit building up throughout the months that will help to not create that big block again of wax like that black one that I showed you okay so um, doing that, you're gonna maintain the ear canal healthy, all right? Um, unfortunately, some patients, because the ear canal is very narrow, I think one of the questions I can remember now, I saw a question, uh, I think it's from Ilva. Um, she has a very narrow ear canal. Um, and then unfortunately, some of this shape of ear canals, um, the wax just build up very quickly because it's not like round, as I showed you, this normal, you know, ear canal is a bit more narrow. So um, that way the wax is just build up. And even if it doesn't build up a lot, it already blocking, right, the, the ear canal. And that can affect quite a bit uh, when you have hearing aids, right, or, or can cause any other symptom, okay? So I think, um, so that would be the best way to manage. And then, um, and then what we can always find out is if you need that service maybe done every three, four months, um, then sometimes we just pre-schedule you for uh, every couple of months to have that wax removed, okay? But to be sincere, I haven't found any tool out there, any um, safe way that you can really clean your ears besides uh, managing after the wax was removed 
and doing the regular base treatment uh, monthly, I would say, with um, something that can keep it uh, soft. Um, and that washing your ears um, once a month, and that should be good enough, okay? Um, men um, have more hair in the ear canal, uh, what doesn't help, okay? Because the hair kind of holds it, that wax, so it's normal to have more build up uh, because of that. And then on the other hand, women, we usually have a smaller ear canal if you're more like a petite uh, woman. So um, that also can be a problematic when um, you have ear wax because it also blocks the ear canal very uh, easily. So if you wear hearing aids, um, a good tip for you is if you have hearing aids and you, you're having to change your wax filter, let's say every week, okay um, i would have your ears checked because the ear filter shouldn't last just one week okay uh, you might have a problem with a lot of moisture so it might maybe it's not even wax and then there's not much we can do about it but if it's plugging the the filter every week i would get the wax removed okay if your earwax uh if your filter is plugging maybe once a month um that's fine, okay? That probably you don't have a lot of wax in your ear canal, okay? So don't, uh, oh, one thing I wanna mention is, oh, before I forget, I just remember now because of the cleaning, is the itchy, okay? Itchy ears, okay? So that's another problem as well. And um, itchy ears can be caused by fungus, okay? Um, so sometimes if people uh, do a lot of swimming, um, they just are prone to fungus, uh, that could cause very itchiness. So before we try to keep, you know, dealing with the itchiness yourself, and if it's something that really bother you, I would ask your doctor to take a look and make sure you have no fungus in there and don't need any uh, prescription. But ear wax can definitely cause a lot of the itchiness as well, okay? So a lot of people will feel relieved when the wax is removed. It's going to help them with the itchiness. And then on the other hand, um, if your ear canal is too dry, okay? So if you have a dry skin, that can cause itchiness as well. So if it's more to the dry side, um, first, again, I would... Ask your doctor to check and make sure you don't have an eczema, okay? So maybe you suffer from eczema and it's happening in your ears. If that's the case, you need prescription and you might need a, a different type of mold, sorry, of your hearing aids. So something that um, uh, may be more hypoallergenic. Uh, there are things we can do there to, to help you with the itchiness. But at the same time, if you've been drying, okay, so if you're every day you take a shower, you clean your ears with your tip, clean your ear tip, you're removing all the natural moisture of the ear canal. So it can get very dry and then will cause the itchiness. Okay, so you might need to use, um, there is a product that you can buy, they call Ear Gene. Uh, so Ear Gene is, is just a, a, more like a water-based type of product actually, but it helps people to relieve the, the from itchiness right away. Um, sometimes you need a bit of a lubrication as well in there. Um, so there are products specifically for that, um, that you can buy, that you can still wear your hearing aids with it. That's not gonna clog like oil. Uh, olive oil, baby oil, but it's um, a lubricant that can, like a water-based lubricant, um, and that will help as well to, to get a bit of moisture there if you have a very dry skin, okay? So that can cause a lot, lot, lot of itchiness, okay? Um, another symptom I wanna mention that happened very recently. I had a, a patient in the office that she was getting this clicking noise. She clicking, clicking, but it was on and off, on and off, and uh, her ear canal was, Full of wax okay so when you're moving your jaw uh, it moves inside your ear canal as well and if you have a big block of wax in there uh, that wax is just moving inside your ear canal um, so you can also notice this clicking noise okay um what else let me see i know we have a lot of questions i had lots to talk about i haven't really noticed uh i will um be going over all these questions here. My friend is sending me all the questions here, but I don't know. Let's see if I have anything else here to mention to you guys. So yeah, uh, oh, I wanna mention something. I don't know if you have seen um, 
there is a, this video toscopy that I mentioned to you when you put a video and you can see, you know, on the camera, there is um, equipments like that that you can even buy online nowadays. Um, and you can see your ear canal in your cell phone. Um, I think, you know, I'm sure everybody here is smart enough to understand that that's not a good option, okay? Um, that type of uh, equipment, you don't know, um, you have no perception of, of depth in your ear canal, right? So you don't really know how close you are. They don't have a magnified, um, so you don't have how close you are going with those tools. Um, so it's those, I think that the saying I learned in Canada, I don't think we have this in, in Brazil. I don't know, maybe I, I didn't know, but don't put anything smaller than your elbow in your ear canal, right? Uh, I'm sure you heard that from your doctor because it's true, okay? There's a lot of risks there. And, uh, and as I said, even if it hasn't happened, it, it could happen, okay? Uh, but. Your hearing professional, I think, would be the best person to tell you how you can manage your wax, okay? So you might need appointments often to have the wax removed, uh, or I, it has happened when people had a lot of wax and once they were doing that treatment once a month, as I mentioned to you, uh, they were not building up as much wax anymore and we could maybe be seeing them once a year and was enough, okay? Um, and another thing it changes too that I have noticed, I don't, don't have any scientific explanation for that, but I have noticed some people that had no wax at all when they were young and suddenly they have a lot of wax. And then the opposite, people that had a lot of wax and then suddenly they don't have wax. So it could be related to medication, and sometimes uh, we hear about uh, some type of foods. Um, so we hear a lot about like dairy food um, that is more the moisture, you create more moisture in your body, uh, but nothing is really proved. So I just, you know, you can just observe and, and see if that, uh, that helps you, okay? But uh, yeah, so unfortunately I don't have like the, the magical tool that you can clean it, but I hope you learn what are the steps um, and then we can help you in the clinic to, 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 so you can manage your wax uh, with that product. And we can take a look and see if it's working, right? And then if we got, oh yeah, it's working every month, I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, and then you shouldn't have much problems with wax, okay? Um, all right, so uh, I see some questions here. Can we have our ears checked for wax uh, at a local clinic? Uh, that's from uh, Mrs. Wayarki. <laughs> yes, we can, yeah. Uh, so all our clinics, our hair professionals are um, uh, capable, okay, to look in your ears and, uh, and see if you have an impacted uh, wax or not. Um, and if you have to have this removed. Uh, some provinces in Canada, you need a special certificate to remove wax. So not every Connect clinic or all the hearing professionals will be able to do that, but I'm sure they will be able to guide you uh, where you should go or who you should see, um, and perhaps even the method that should be used, okay? So we can uh, uh, definitely uh, get that. Oh, my aunt! Regina <laughs> from Brazil, hi. Uh, let's see, uh, can you put full strength uh, H2O, I think it's 3% and after softening with mineral oil? Uh, yes, you can, Heather, yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? Let's see, let me go over here some questions. Uh, mineral oil, uh, that's from uh, Care Ross. Uh, yes, you can use mineral oil. So important about the mineral oil, uh, Care, is um, is how much wax you have there, okay? So if you have a real buildup of wax and you keep putting, putting mineral oil, and as I mentioned to you, if you wash the ears yourself, you, you won't be able to get everything out because those uh, equipments that you can do at home, they don't have enough pressure to get this wax out, okay? So the mineral oil, I would say, would be uh, good if you have like an appointment to have it removed. So it's gonna be softened the wax, so it's easier for us professionals to remove it. Um, or it can be good as well if you're just doing your maintenance, okay, monthly, okay? That can be used as well. All right, but uh, as you see, uh, we need to have the ears inspected to see how much wax is in there, right? You, you won't know until someone look at inside, okay? Let's see if I get any other question here. Um, okay, so that's for 
Erwin, uh, how do I know when to replace the white tips on the hearing aids? So that's a good question, Erwin, is the um, wax filters, right? So if you are not noticing, so there's two different ways you can do it, okay? You can replace them on a regular basis. So let's say once a month, you just replace it. So wax filters are usually uh, free when you get hearing aids. Um, so we can provide you enough wax filters for the year and then you can just change them once a month. Um, or if you are not a big, you know, we don't have big production of wax, you could potentially wait until you notice a change um, in the hearing aid performance and then change the filter, okay? So there is no best way, but uh, I would say, Probably changing on a regular basis would be better. Um, so then you never get in the situation where you're out and now your uh, filter is plugged and you can't hear because of it, right? So maybe on a regular basis, but um, I think it depends on how much wax you produce as well, okay? So we do have patients that doesn't have any wax and those wax filters can last for months, okay? Um, but you, you watch the performance of your hearing aid, okay? Uh, Irene, I have to go to a medical appointment now. Hope I can uh, replay. Oh yes, you can, Irene. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so this is for Bill Norris. Um, I have to have my flushed about every 18 months, even though I clean my ears uh, after every shower. So hopefully, Bill, you're not gonna be using Q-tips anymore. Um, that's not gonna change how uh, often you're gonna have to have your ears uh, cleaned medically, uh, professionally, I mean, because um, you maybe be pushing your wax deeper, okay? But you see, for example, for a bill, um, it takes 18 months to have that cleaned, right? So not always we need to be cleaning ears all the time, okay? And I know it's the first thing we all think about it. Hi, Riz, hey! Uh, let's see, um, let's see what else of questions we have here. Uh, Let's see, what is the best way to manage and prevent wax? Oh, that's a good question, Matthew. Uh, this is from Matthew. Uh, what is the best way to manage, prevent wax entering on a behind the ear hearing aid? Um, cleaning them every day, Matthew, okay? So if you use those cleaning tools, uh, hopefully you have them at home. If not, we can definitely provide the cleaning tools. Um, when you take the hearing aid out, we should always look at the hearing aid, okay? Um, and I would do that, you could do at nighttime or in the morning before you put them in, but you wanna wipe or you can use the little brushes. I don't have any here, uh, but uh, we can just use the little brushes. Um, and I know he's asking about the tubing of the um, behind the ear, you know, those normal, mm, I don't have here to show you, sorry, but it's a uh, behind the ear model has a tube. Um, and unfortunately, if you try to clean, sometimes that wax go inside the tube and then we need to have the tube replaced, right? But if you clean the edges of the mold every day, um, then it, it will avoid to get that wax deeper in the tubing and then don't need to be replaced, okay? Uh, what else? Buildup of wax in my left ear. That's from Irene. A very narrow ear canal, uh, so hard to remove. Uh, should I get it flushed? Um, I would say, Irene, yeah, flushing could be a good option for you or suction method as well. Um, the flushing, as I said, we need to be a bit careful um, with the pressure. Uh, it could cause dizziness in some uh, patients and uh, we need to make sure your eardrum is healthy enough for it, okay? Uh, but it can be a very good method uh, in some cases, okay? But if you have a narrow canal, Irene, I think that's a good option for you is once it's removed, uh, make sure you uh, put the oil once a month um, and then wash your ears by yourself because that will avoid to create that buildup, okay? Uh, what else? We have a lot of questions here, my goodness. Let's see if I get uh, another question here. Uh, let's see from my, my colleague if she sent me any mail of a question I might... Uh, have missed. Um, okay. Oh, one question we get a lot is if you need to warm up the oil. Don't need to warm up the oil. Okay. You just use a normal temperature oil when you when you uh, when to soften the wax. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. 
I think that's all the questions I had. Okay, so hopefully I gave some, you know, ideas what you do. Um, I know, unfortunately, as I said, I don't have like the, the magical tool that you can use, um, but as long as you had your ear inspected by your hair professional and then you know, do I need the ears clean or not? Um, as long as you learn how to identify the changes in your hearing or the performance of your hearing aids, because that's a big, um, uh, indication if you need to have your ears checked okay um, and uh, and then doing that once the wax is out uh, then you need to have that management you know monthly um, hey Rick hi <laughs> um, uh, so uh, I know that ha helps a lot of people to, to keep the wax away okay uh, but in some cases you're gonna need the professional to remove it um, and it can be maybe once a year it can be once every three months um, unfortunately where it's all different our ear canal size is different right so you might need that help okay to, to keep it clean okay so yeah so i think we're good uh thank you so much for all of you here i knew it would be a very hot topic i see a lot of people watching me so hopefully i brought some answers um for you and uh and again let us know if you want to listen to anything from me i want to keep this doing doing these videos uh, uh to as long as i have a topic to talk about it and i uh, really enjoy being here um so thank you thank you for your kindness always on the the comments and uh stay safe stay connected uh enjoy the beginning of fall and uh thank you again okay bye bye